Welcome to the exam room live brought to you by the physicians committee. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll, and this is the healthiest half hour anywhere online today. Appreciate you joining us right here on Facebook and on YouTube as we do our best to both educate and inspire. On tap today, Dr. Neil Barnard is here with a look at the coronavirus. Specifically, as new cases continue to surge, there are signs now that the virus is mutating. Dr. Barnard, important words from you coming up. You bet. Uh, we're turning the page now. I can't wait to share it with you. And if you have a question for Dr. Barnard, go ahead right now and post it in the comment section. We will be opening up the doctor's mailbag in just a little bit. So get your question posted right this moment. Also on the show today, well, how about a dose of inspiration? It was nearly a decade ago that Bruce Milray was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And that day, it changed his life. But in turn, it also changed the lives of countless others. He and his wife, Mindy, now travel the country educating others about the benefits of a plant-based diet. And they will be here with us today to talk about their incredible journey and Bruce's new book. So can't wait for that. But before we go any further, let's get you caught up on what is going on in the world. Here are your health headlines for Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. And as always, we start with the look at the resurgence of coronavirus in the U.S., where health officials say the number of new cases reported Tuesday was the second highest in history, with at least six states breaking previous records. Of greater concern, though, caseloads over the past week are now trending higher in 45 states, according to the Washington Post. Hospitalizations also rising in many locations. Seven states are reporting spikes of 25% or more in the number of COVID-19 patients. Texas being the hardest hit as the number of infected flooding hospitals there has swelled by more than 40%. The virus has now claimed more than 127,000 lives in the U.S. and 512,000 worldwide. Meanwhile, the nation's leading infectious disease expert says we need to act quickly or the wave of new infections is going to get far worse. Testifying on Capitol Hill Tuesday, Dr. Anthony Fauci said the U.S. could see as many as 100,000 new cases every day, more than twice as many as the current record-setting levels. And in other news, a Canadian study finds that nutrition is critical for preventing cognitive decline, and a diet rich in plants is best for brain health. Researchers at the University of Toronto measured what is known as verbal fluency. That's where subjects are given a category and then told to list as many words as possible relating to that within one minute. And it turns out that the more fruits and vegetables, nuts and pulses that the person ate, the better they were able to perform. And those who ate at least six servings every day scored the highest. Conversely, the study of more than 8,500 adults between the ages of 45 and 85 also finds those who had high blood pressure, were obese, or had a high percentage of body fat tended to perform worse in the tests. And finally, file this under freaky but true. See, what you're looking at on your screen right here, that is a 3D printer. And a company in Israel is using one similar to it to print plant-based steak. Indeed, we are talking not farm to table, but printer to table. Redefine Meat plans to roll out highly refined mock meat with precision detailing that can mimic the taste and feel of real steak in ways never done before. The company claims its printers can print a number of different cuts from Japanese beef to grass-fed Australian prime cut. The company's founder says such detail will be critical to converting people to a plant-based diet. Redefine Meat is planning to hit high-end restaurants later this year, according to Veg News. That's interesting. Okay, uh, moving on. Health officials aren't just concerned with the surge in new COVID-19 infections. There is also now concern that the coronavirus itself is beginning to mutate. Moreover, experts are also keeping a watchful eye over a new virus that is beginning to spread in China. The timing on this really couldn't be any worse. Let's welcome Dr. Neil Barnard to the show to further this discussion. Dr. Barnard, a uh, lot to really digest here. So what what are we seeing? Yeah, um, well, you, you, you mentioned it at the beginning that the virus seems to be spreading and we're hitting new records and everyone's sort of attributing that to the fact that, well, we reopened too soon and young people in particular are heading out and, and they're uh, not socially distancing. That's all part of it. There's, there's no denying it. However, 
the virus itself is changing and it appears to be becoming more infective. Um, let me uh, give you a quick analogy. You're walking through the woods, you're backpacking with your friends in the end of the afternoon, you get home and stuck to your uh, scarf or your sock or your sweater is one of these little cockleburs. And as you look at them, if you look at them under the microscope, you see that they have these strong spikes with little hooks on them that can, can hook into you and they don't leave. Well, the coronavirus has spikes too. Up until now, the virus has been, or up until fairly recently, it was called the D variant of the virus that relates to, the name comes from, uh, to refer to one of the amino acid proteins that's in it. Uh, the spikes that it, it made tended to not hook on very well and they were fragile, they would break off. Uh, but like all living beings, uh, viruses mutate over time. The problem is that, that uh, coronaviruses mutate really fast. And so the D uh, virus, D variant has been giving way to the G variant uh, very gradually. Now to understand this graph, um, the D variant was at the beginning of January, February, beginning of March, it was all D variant and they had rather weak spikes. Then starting around March, you started to see the G variant coming in and really taking over so that now about June, that's about all we're seeing. The G variant has stronger spikes. That, that means that when it's blowing in the wind, it can stick to you better. If it happens to go down your lungs, instead of you just coughing it out, it sticks there. So is it more deadly? Probably not, but is it more infectious? Probably so, almost certainly so. So what does that mean? Before you might have, the virus may have passed you by. Now, if it's around, you are more likely to get it. That's what we think now. Now we're still studying this and looking at it, but it means that the virus is almost certainly gonna keep spreading and keep spreading and keep spreading and keep spreading. And the old wish that we had back in March that, oh, this will be a few months and it's gonna go away. I'm sorry to tell you, I don't think so. Uh, it's going to stick around here for a while. Now, we could contain it. Masks help. Social distancing helps. All these things. But uh, this virus is not going away. Not anytime soon. Okay. Uh, if I haven't cheered you up enough with that, uh, over in China, there is uh, a worrisome new development of a new pandemic. And in this case, this is not a coronavirus. It's uh, an influenza virus. And it focuses on pigs. Pigs... Uh, can harbor influenza viruses in the same way that people can, in the same way that chickens can. And epidemiologists often think of them as sort of like a mixing vessel where one virus might enter the pig and the pig's not going to be too sick and can harbor that virus. A new virus comes in, uh, similar to it, but not quite the same. The two of them hook up and their progeny become more infectious or more deadly. That's what we're seeing now. So uh, the new virus that is now in pigs uh, over in China, it has this uh, unromantic name, G4EA H1N1 virus. Here's the issue. It enters human lungs. It is easily transmissible to human beings. Some of the H1N1s are not. This one is. And what is particularly troubling is that humans have a certain amount of what we call her herd immunity to the flu. You've been exposed to various flus, different variants every single year. Um, you have some ability to fight it off. So the flu is not going to be quite so bad as it would have been a century ago when the influenza was new. Not this one. With this one, when you look at it, it is genetically different enough that we don't seem to have much immunity to it. So is it spreading? And the answer is yes. Uh, some tests were just released uh, from China. And among the young people, not, not in the communities, not in the cities, uh, not even in the rural areas, but the, the people who are specifically working with pigs, 20% of young people are uh, already positive for it and 10% of swine workers overall in China are positive. Uh, what we suspect is gonna happen is that from the workers to their families, to the communities, the virus spreads. And then from then it, it from there, it becomes basically an influenza. Uh, there's a long runway for this to happen, but it's well on the way. So uh, what do researchers think about it? This is just what just came out from the uh, PNAS the other day, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, let me just read it. Such infectivity greatly enhances the opportunity to virus adaptation in humans and raises concerns for a possible generation of pandemic 
viruses. So what does this really mean? Whether we are talking about, about the uh, coronavirus or whether we're talking about influenza viruses, it's really clear that we have to do what we can to avoid contracting the virus, but we also have to make sure that our immunity is as strong as it can and that, and that we are as strong as we can be. So that goes back to what we've been saying in every show since we started this, and that is you need a plant-based diet. You need that to achieve as healthy a body weight as you can. You need to tackle high blood pressure as well as you can. You need to tackle diabetes as well as you can. These viruses are coming. Um, so uh, plant-based diet is essential in addition to all the uh, other steps that you're going to take. So really important to note here, a plant-based diet really helps with those underlying conditions that we're, we've been talking about as well since the beginning. But again, just to really hammer home this point, there is no known immunity to whether this is the current COVID-19 or the new swine flu that is developing, correct? Correct. That may change. Uh, everyone is, is, is looking out for the, the next vaccine. Uh, there are many vaccine candidates. Some of them look promising. None of them are ready at all. Um, and with regard to influenza, there are vaccines produced all the time. Uh, we have them every year, as you know. You can go to any drugstore and they'll gladly inject you. Um, however, they are guessing too. Um, we don't have one for this new variant at all. And uh, when, when e even for the routine seasonal flus, we just really don't know that we've got them. So uh, we really need to eat in a healthy way, uh, particularly for, for coronavirus, but also for flu. And lastly, I know that it's probably too early to have a definitive answer on this, but maybe just speculate here with me a little bit. Um, if the virus is mutating and there are multiple strains now, uh, would that then increase the chances that somebody could have coronavirus, recover, and then catch it a second time, but then it would be a different strain? Yes, th that's exactly right. Several things can happen. Um, in an ideal scenario, you get it once you're immune forever. Um, it's not even clear that that's true. In the, in the same way as, let's say you get a cold. Does that mean you will never have another cold in the next for the next two years? No, um, you can get a cold three weeks later after your first one. So sometimes you just don't get immunity at all. That could happen with coronavirus. Uh, but your scenario, the, it mutates, you could get it again, absolutely. And what it means is that a vaccine that is effective against one variant may not be effective against another. Now, uh, we wanna be optimistic. We wanna assume that vaccines can be produced but uh, it's also good to be cautious and to assume that we are likely, uh, let's face it, the vast majority of people in America and the rest of the world have not yet been exposed to the virus, but the virus is now more um, infective than it had ever been. So you have to assume it's coming and we've got to, we've got to take protective measures and um, in addition to wearing a mask and so forth, uh, go shopping for your vegetables, uh, eat, those, <laughs> eat those things. Um, we've got to assume it's coming. Holy cow. Uh, okay. All right. Dr. Barnard, uh, lots of good information there, startling information, but definitely good information. And I'm sure that there are people watching this right now who may have a follow-up of their own. So if you do have a question for Dr. Barnard, go ahead and post that in the comment section. We will be opening up the doctor's mailbag in just a little bit. And boy, I got to tell you, coming off of that, we could use a little pick me up, right? And so that is why I think that my next guests are coming on at the perfect time. Nine years ago, Bruce Milray received the shock of his life when doctors told him that he had prostate cancer. The diagnosis turned his world upside down, but also became the catalyst for a new mission in his life to study health and nutrition and educate anyone willing to listen about the role of diet and disease. It has become Bruce's mission in life, as well as that of his wife, Mindy. And now the longtime couple travel the country in an RV covered head to toe in brightly colored images of fruits and vegetables appropriately. They call it the wellness wagon. And Bruce has documented this extraordinary journey in his new book, A Plant-Powered Approach to Prostate Cancer. And Bruce and Mindy are here with us today to share this incredible story with us. Bruce and Mindy, thank you guys so very much for joining us today. Thank you. I Please, what what an intro! <laughs> yes. It is so good to see you guys, and you are you are actually on the wellness wagon right now. Actually, we moved into uh, Mindy's brother's house because there's a little bit better uh, internet connection here, so hopefully their sound is a little bit better. But our wellness <laughs> wagon is right out out the door, yeah, right and outside. yeah, that's where we're living full time yep. right now. 
Okay, I was about to be really impressed that you guys had surfboards in the wellness wagon. Like that, that would have just been uh, mind blowing. Yeah, I'm a Snoopy poster. No, no, this is where we On. are. We do a lot of our uh, podcasts and and trainings now because we're we're not at conferences. Well, let's dive into this book because that's really the exciting thing here. Just out, um, Bruce. the The book really kind of walks us through your entire journey. But let's start with the day of diagnosis and the emotions that came with you sitting down with the doctor and them just breaking this news to you. Well, as as anyone who's listening now and has been given that diagnosis, it is completely devastating. I was not prepared for it. I was living in what I called my I'm going to live forever lifestyle. And uh, I was 52. And I felt great. My only issue is my cholesterol is high. And I was a little overweight. But I thought, oh, I'll deal with that later, like everything else. And I happened to read the China study by T. Colin Campbell flying across the country. And I went, whoa, hold on a second here. I can drop my cholesterol myself. Uh, my cholesterol is at 276 right before I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, I went on a plant-based diet after reading Dr. Campbell's book, and I dropped my cholesterol by 100 points. And a week later, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And uh, that's what happened to me. I didn't have any emotional tools, uh, neither did Mindy. And uh, it, it hit us left field and our family left field at had a tremendous impact on our family and does to this day, which is why I wrote the book, because uh, men who are diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was diagnosed at age 52, which is younger than most, uh, but uh, uh, the survival odds of prostate cancer are better, fortunately, than most other cancers. And because of that, it gives you the opportunity to, to have to deal with angst and fear. And uh, I had to teach myself not only uh, how to optimize my diet, and I dove into the research there, but also how to deal with the emotional stress and the long-term emotional stress associated with dealing with, uh, I had surgery, I had my prostate removed, I've had two rounds of radiation, uh, I still have cancer, uh, we haven't been able to find it uh, through an MRI, but uh, I am having a biopsy in a couple of weeks to see if we can still locate it. It doesn't look like it's spread in my body. And I attribute my diet to that. And I've been battling for eight years. And my most powerful tool I can tell you is a whole food plant-based diet, 100%. Uh, and I use it as a tool to deal with the situation, to help my mood, and to battle the disease. And I can tell you, even though I've been battling it for almost a decade now, I have never felt better. Mindy, let me ask you, because I know that you have this extraordinary background in the fitness industry. And as Bruce was just saying, this came as a complete shock to everyone involved here. What did you know about the connection between food and disease and the way that he was eating and how everything just kind of ties together? Well, the funny thing is, in the fitness industry, it doesn't necessarily tie together. That's one of the reasons that Bruce and I started the One Day to Wellness uh, uh, .org uh, foundation is because many people in the fitness industry, they think fitness is it, 100%. And we know that nutrition is first and foremost the foundation of wellness. So when, we, when Bruce was diagnosed, he was, we thought he was very healthy because on the outside, he looked super healthy. And then when we dove into the, the world of nutrition, we found very quickly our mission and our passion. So it was, it was, it's my job in the fitness industry to help and help support the fitness industry from a nutritional perspective. And Bruce and I now lecture at most every fitness conference on plant-based nutrition and wellness and how you balance it all. It's not just working out, but first and foremost, it's food. And then nutrition and exercise is a, is a huge component, but it is not the end all be all. It's food first. Bruce, how did uh, the plant-based diet help you as you were going through those initial rounds of treatment when things were really kind of just, uh, they can just knock you flat on your back and, and just drain every ounce of life out of you. How did that nutrition and that new diet help you as you were going through that? That's a great question, Chuck. I think uh, I'll use an example because I've had several treatments. 
uh, the most, the toughest treatment I had was four years ago. Uh, I had additional radiation to the lymph nodes in my abdomen because although we weren't able to identify cancer there, uh, my medical team uh, looked at, said this is the most likely route and of where it's gonna head if it's gonna metastasize. So I had um, six weeks of targeted radiation coupled with uh, my first round of uh, androgen deprivation therapy, which is hormone therapy, essentially eliminating all your testosterone and a boatload of other medical drugs or, or you know, uh, pharmaceutical drugs that made me feel absolutely awful. And I was able to power through that entire eight, well, six to eight yeah. weeks of really just a low level Gosh. nausea with a plant-based diet. And I was able to mitigate the nausea, also incorporating some ginger into my diet. And the same people that were there at this clinic going through the same experience that I was not on a plant-based diet, not even close, having a tremendous time struggling with fatigue and nausea and low energy. And every treatment that I've had, my diet, the, 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 the side effects have been absolutely minimal compared to what I was told they were going to be. And uh, nausea, uh, tiredness, and let's talk about impotence. Oh, can I talk about it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All the doctors, they, they said to me, um, they pulled me aside and said, you know, your husband is not going to be the same. We've been married almost 40 years and our, our relationship in every aspect is pretty darn fantastic. So that was very hard for me to hear. However, the opposite was true because of Bruce's plant-based diet and um, the eating foods that support blood flow really enhanced everything. I won't go into it all the way, but it's been really profound in that Bruce, first of all, as Bruce said, his side effects have been very minimal. And second of all, our, our sex life is fantastic because of the foods that Bruce eats. It also is a well-rounded approach of balance and meditation and mindfulness and, and leading with this mission that we are on. Having and, a sense of purpose. Yeah, we have found that that is what we want to do. And that's why we moved into an RV, wrapped it with fruits and vegetables, and this is all that we do. So I wrote a book called The Plant-Powered Penis, which I was on <laughs> your, your show about five months ago, and, and that came out. And it is really all about that we have control over our outcome. And there are stats out there of, of men with prostate cancer or women with breast cancer or whatever it is that we have control by how we exercise and what we eat and how we think and how we feel and who we surround ourselves with. And I think that's a really important point is that I know so many cancer patients, uh, they, they feel like they, they don't have any control mm -hmm. over what's happening to them and their outcome. I have felt that way numerous times. And we're here to tell you, you do. Yeah. And, but it requires uh, a, an honest assessment of what you're doing and how you're living and um, letting go of old and outdated beliefs about food, which can be very difficult if you're diagnosed with cancer when, when you're older, but it is so powerful. And we're not saying it's a cure for cancer. We're just saying, if you're diagnosed, the, the plant-based diet is the way to go. And the and doctors are blown away by Bruce's lack of side effects and uh, just positive approach to all of this. Bruce is kind of a guinea pig. With well, I'm 62 doctors. now and Chuck, honestly, I'm in better shape and I feel better physically than I did when I was 30. <laughs> <laughs> and I have advanced prostate cancer. But other than the mental anguish of dealing with that and worrying about what's down the road. I mean, I just feel, I honestly, I feel spectacular. And, and it's my diet. pretty darn good too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really, to, to look at you, you would never know that anything was amiss. I want to touch on another component of this story that we haven't yet touched on. We've talked so much about nutrition yet, but Bruce, I know that when you were having those days when you were feeling low, you would be coming right out of treatment. And even though the side effects weren't what they could be, you're still not feeling your best. 
but there is Mindy literally dragging you, the firecracker that she is, dragging you to these conferences. And I guess, can you talk about, you know, Mindy, one, why you were doing that? And then Bruce, that sense of purpose that you got from pushing through and how that was able to help. Well, I am the logistics master. So I book us probably every single weekend at a training or a conference somewhere. But I know Bruce very well. I mean, I've lived with him for 40 years. I know that even when he is low, when he has a mission or a purpose in life, and when he can speak in front of other people or help someone in some way, he is thriving. So what I would do is I would pack my little bag with snacks, broccoli and uh, broccoli sprouts, <laughs> and I would... Pick, pick him up and I'd say, come on, honey, we have to go to she the airport She dragged me now. to the airport. We <laughs> fly from, you know, Orlando to Boston. Well, two and years. Then we, and, then, and then, like you said, I would just power through. But once I got there, was um, I was good. And it's that, it is that sense of purpose in helping other people. And, well, that's and just we know, get up and know. start and go. You know, once you're there, you're there. Two years ago, we won the Lifetime Achievement Award at a large conference in Canada. And Bruce had a biopsy the day before. <laughs> He got on the plane that night. Next day, he was on stage accepting this award in Canada. And he did it. It was great. That was tough. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> You guys, I mean, one day to wellness, I'm going to call you guys wellness warriors because that's really, you know, who you are. I mean, this is the, just such an, an incredible story. Let me end by uh, asking you this, kind of the fun one. You know, I've joked about on this very show uh, how you can see this RV from space. I mean, when I said that these are brightly colored fruits and vegetables, I'm not lying. We see a couple of them on your shirts right now. Uh, but when you pull into an RV park, I would love to know how people react and if they come knocking on your door asking, what's up with all the tomatoes? Well, what, yeah, what we thought was going to happen <laughs> is opposite of what actually happens. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, a couple things. Number one, most RV, par RV parks are not the bastion of health in America. That's what I'll start with. Uh, people are there to have a good time and plant-based nutrition is not on the forefront of most people's minds. Right. Uh, we put all those fruits and vegetables on our RV because we don't, we don't, uh, you know, we don't just start engaging people. We let people come to us and we consider it to be a flower because it's so over the top. Most people avoid us <laughs> and go to their us uh, and grill their steaks and their hot dogs and don't talk to us. But what's amazing is kids, there's tons of kids in RV parks. They all come flocking over and they go crazy over the RV. They start asking, what are all, like the palm, what is that, mom? What's that, dad? And the parents have to start explaining what the vegetables are or the fruits are, like the pomegranate, mm -hmm. on our RV. And it begins to engage them. And then the parents will ask us what we do. We never say anything. We just say, hey. And then if they ask us, we say, well, we're a, a a nonprofit, and we're here to help people understand evidence-based nutrition with our partners like Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Mm -hmm. And we have literature from PCRM and our other partners. And we say, if you'd like some information, here it is. And we're happy to discuss it with you if you'd like, and we leave it at that. Yeah. And everything that we offer is free. So if you go to our website, you're going to see uh, recipes and workouts and, and information that's all free. And a lot of it uh, ties in with PCRM. And um, it's, it's, we're, we're hoping that we can change one person, not change, but encourage one person at a time to look at it and, and, and open the line of discussion about whole food plant-based eating. We call it leaning to the green. Leaning to the green. <laughs> and that website is one day to wellness.org. And you can pick up a copy of Bruce's book, A Plant Powered Approach to Prostate Cancer, now available on Amazon. And also, by the by, Mindy alluded to her book, A Plant Powered Penis. You can check that out on Amazon as well. Both of them just phenomenal reads. Bruce and Mindy Milray, thank you so very much for your time and your inspiration today. And Bruce, I, I wish you nothing but the best of health moving into the future, my friend. Thank you, Chuck. And I want to give you a personal thank you as well. You are amazing. You have, uh, you're, you're an inspiration to both Mindy and I, and we can't thank uh, you and your team and Dr. Bernard enough for all of your support and what we're trying to do. We're all on the same team here and we're doing the right thing. 
Well, thank you guys very much. I'm a big fan of yours as well. Uh, we will talk to you again very soon. We're going to be keeping up with them. Don't worry. We have not seen the last of the wellness wagon. That much, I assure you. Okay, time now to open up the doctor's mailbag and get you an answer to a health-related inquiry, my friend. Dr. Barnard is still with us here on the exam room live. And Dr. Barnard, today's question, boy, this one comes to us all the way from the Philippines. Jeanette, she writes, I started a whole food plant-based diet two years ago when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. However, I gained 10 pounds because I went into pizza and breads and pasta, aside from a lot of fruits. So how many of these should I be eating every day? What is the balance? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for your question. Um, secondly, um, I hope that uh, you're getting the, the care that you need for the cancer diagnosis, and I hope that things are going as, as well as, as humanly possible. Uh, let me also congratulate you for if that diagnosis uh, motivated you to improve your diet. That's fantastic. As we were hearing from Bruce and Mindy, uh, diet change can make all the difference. So I'm delighted you're doing that. However, you made a diet change and you're starting to gain weight. And what's that about? And you're wondering, could it be the fact that you're eating uh, pizza and bread and these kinds of things? Uh, maybe. Uh, if that's the case, it may not be so much the pizza crust. Uh, it might be what's on top of the pizza. And it might not be the bread. It might be what's between the bread on your sandwich. What I mean by that is that people will have something uh, that has carbohydrate in it, uh, spaghetti. And if they're gaining weight as time goes on, if they're eating that, they think, darn that spaghetti, it's so fattening. How could that be? Well, the spaghetti is made of semolina, wheat. Uh, it's high in carbohydrate. Carbohydrates have only four calories in every gram. But if it's topped with cheese or meat, they have fat in them, and fat has nine calories per gram. So the toppings are more fattening than the spaghetti. So I'm not going to eat that. I'm going to go on a vegan diet, but now it may be it's got oil in it, um, extra virgin olive oil, organic from Whole Foods. Can't have calories, can it? Well, oils, even from plant sources, have nine calories per gram, just like animal fat. So it's a good thing to keep uh, be careful about the toppings and uh, really limit the oil. Uh, that said, there are breads and pizza doughs where the oil, or in some cases, things like cheese are baked into them. You wanna skip those ones. You wanna really go for low fat. Uh, many people do well by thinking beyond flour products like pizza dough, and instead going for a whole grain. That's brown rice, corn, oats, quinoa, those kinds of things. Um, I'm, not, I'm not ready to say that bread should be condemned. I don't think so. Uh, but but uh, when people eat the whole grain, particularly with the fiber, that's uh, extra points for that because that fills you up without calories. Last point, you said fruits. Are they okay? And how much of these can I eat? The answer is how much do you want? There's, there's no limit on these things. Uh, fruits are a mixture of healthy complex carbohydrates, which are low in calories always. And they're rich in water, which doesn't have any calories at all. Plus, nobody ever binges on, nobody, a person might eat 16 cookies, but they never ate 16 apples. So uh, fruit is going to be your best friend. All right. Don't cry. Dry your eye if we didn't get to your question today. I promise you we save everything that comes in and we will try to get you an answer on a future show. Dr. Barnard, don't go anywhere yet because apparently it is National Doctor's Day in India and Anu is wishing you a very happy Doctor's Day from all the way halfway around the world. Thank you. That's the loveliest thing. What a great way to great way to start the month. Thank you so much. And right back at you. Apparently, it's also National Canada Day as well. So uh, lots going on here on July 1st. And uh, Dr. Barnard, I got to tell you here, uh, I'm also really, really excited about the podcast tomorrow, the Exam Room podcast. Uh, I spoke with Hugo and Ross Turner this morning. They're known as the Turner Twins. These are 31-year-old twin brothers from London. They saw the documentary The Game Changers, and one went vegan and one did not. And they had everything measured. They did this like super scientifically. And what, what do you think happened, Dr. Barnard? I think people are going to tune in and find out. I think that you are spot on, my friend. <laughs> uh, so that show will be and out call on. One of their best friends and make them tune in as well, because it's, I, it, it is a very, very cool story. 
It really is. So uh, that show will be out tomorrow on the Exam Room podcast. So head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify, wherever shows are available, hit that subscribe button. And if you would be so kind as to leave a five-star rating as well, Dr. Barnard and I would certainly appreciate it. Dr. Barnard, thank you very much for your time. I'm sure you will be tuning in tomorrow as well. I sure will. Thank you, Chuck. All right. And if you would like to get in touch with any one of our plant-based doctors or dietitians at the Barnard Medical Center, you can make an appointment and you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. All you need to do is head over to barnardmedical.org or pick up the phone and call 202-527-7500. I'm telling you, the staff there really puts a premium on nutrition. So often, People ask, where can I find a good plant-based doctor or dietitian, somebody who really knows the importance of preventative medicine? My friend, they are all locked in for you at barnardmedical.org or call 202-527-7500. You, if you live in California, New York, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Missouri, Arizona, Colorado, Massachusetts, or Kentucky, our doctors and dietitians would be happy to meet with you and new states coming online all the time. So stay tuned if we are not there just yet. And also, many thanks once again to Bruce and Mindy Milray for that incredible amount of inspiration on the program today. What, what, I mean, just what a phenomenal story. Really, please head over to their website, one day to wellness.org. If for no other reason than to just see this wellness wagon, I mean, this is just the most incredible thing. I wish everybody could see this rolling down the highway because really, you know, when you see this thing, that health is rolling in to your town. Also, don't forget to pick up a copy of Bruce's book, A Plant-Powered Approach to Prostate Cancer. And also a big thanks to the crew behind the scenes here at The Exam Room Live, our producers, Laura Anderson and Donna Steele, as well as our director, rocking the technical wheels of steel, Emily Colon. For Dr. Neil Barnard and everyone here at the Physicians Committee, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Thank you so very much for watching. And until tomorrow, remember, take a stand, stay safe, and keep it plant-based.